How is it possible that a language model can answer questions about events that happened today, so after the model was trained? Let's break it down from the beginning. Suppose we have access to a large language model trained in December 2024. If we asked it about an event that occurred after that date, like a recent sports match, we might get a response saying it can't answer due to the data cutoff. We might get a similar answer when asking about documents published after the training date. Or worse, it might generate a plausible sounding answer that's completely made up. This is known as a hallucination. Now, we could retrain the model with updated data, but that's time consuming, expensive, and still wouldn't guarantee it can reference specific sources accurately. Despite their capabilities, base language models have limitations. They hallucinate, struggle with citing sources, and require frequent retraining to stay current. And in this video, I will show you how it's possible to address these issues. What if instead of directly answering a question about a recent event, a model could first look it up in external database, analyze it, and then generate a response with sources. And what if instead of directly answering a question about a recent event, a model could first look it up on the internet and then generate a response with sources. In natural language processing, we call the first approach a closed book, where the model must rely entirely on what it learned during training. The second approach, where the model can access external information, is known as open book, like taking an exam with full access to your notes and other materials. And that's where the RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, comes in. Introduced in 2020 by researchers from Facebook AI Research, RAG combines the strengths of retrieval systems and language models. The core idea is simple. Use a retriever to search external sources for relevant information, and then use a generator, the language model, to craft a response based on that data. And here's how it works. Instead of sending your query straight to the model, this query is first passed to the retriever. The retriever searches an external database or even the internet for relevant chunks of information. These are then combined with the original query and sent to the language model which generates final answer. This allows even an older model to respond with current or specialized information. And that's why it's called Retrieval Augmented Generation. We first retrieve relevant information, augment the original query with it, and then generate an answer using the language model as our generator. And the external retrieved data is commonly referred to as context. Let's look at RAG architecture with a practical example. The question goes to the retriever, which finds the most relevant small chunks of text called passages. And these passages are added to the query and this augmented input is passed to the language model to generate the answer. Comparing the two in terms of input and output, in basic LLM, the output comes solely from its internal memory. In RAG, we add context from external sources to the query, enabling the model to produce more accurate, up-to-date answers. And in practice, it proves to be very effective. One of the most fascinating aspects of RAG is that the retriever doesn't operate directly on text. It works with vectors. Let me explain. Suppose we have a document in our external database. It's first broken down into equal length chunks, passages, and each chunk is passed through an embedding model, which converts it into a dense vector, a series of numbers that capture the meaning of text. 
This means that phrases like up to three remote days and three days of telework would have similar vectors even though the wording differs. It also helps differentiate between Python, the programming language, and Python, the snake. We repeat this process for every text chunk in the document and store the resulting vectors in a vector database. And this is how we build a whole vector database. Each document or source from the internet is divided into chunks and each chunk is embedded into a dense vector. Then each vector is stored alongside the original text it represents. Once we have a vector database and the user submits a query, the query is also converted into a dense vector. The system calculates similarities between this query vector and all vectors in the database per after per, usually using the dot product or cosine similarity. The higher the value, the greater the similarity between the query and the corresponding text chunk. After sorting, the top k most similar passages are selected as a context. Here we selected the top three most similar passages. And it's worth remembering that vectors are used for very efficient similarity search, but the final context is made of the actual text chunks. So in summary, the retriever turns your query into a vector finds the most relevant text passages via the vector database and passes this as a context to the language model. And what's even more interesting is that we can train the RAC system to improve its accuracy. We can use different embedding models for the documents and the query. And during training, the query model can be fine-tuned to find better matches. The document model can also be updated, but that's more computationally expensive since it requires re-embedding a large number of documents in the database. And of course, the language model itself can be fine-tuned too. I've already mentioned that RAG lets an LLM access external sources like documents or the internet. Another benefit of RAG is how easily we can manage data. Unlike retraining an LLM, which is costly and complex, we can update the external database anytime, add manuals, remove outdated news, or even switch to a new domain-specific dataset. This makes RAG far more flexible. But RAG isn't perfect. It still relies on the quality of external sources. It can misinterpret sarcasm or humor in retrieved text, which may lead to inaccurate, misleading or even dangerous responses, even when the RAG system provides source. And sometimes it generates an answer what it should just say, I don't know. In conclusion, RAG blends two types of memory, parametric, the model's internal knowledge, and non-parametric, external, retrievable knowledge. This approach enhances accuracy, reduces hallucinations, and enables customizations of the model's knowledge base. It's a major step toward bridging the gap between static pre-trained models and dynamic, knowledge-rich systems. And the original RAC framework has evolved with numerous improvements in chunking strategies, embedding techniques, context augmentation, passage ranking, and fine-tuning methods. There are so many interesting and practical enhancements worth exploring that they truly deserve a separate video. Thank you for watching.